welcome to day 5 clap 2 webinar session Good morning. streaming uh, on uh, acrt official channels of youtube as well as facebook uh, today's uh, topic is phonetic phonetics 2 and with us uh, uh, we have resource person uh, professor salivendra jay hyderabad welcome sir yes thank you thank you very much and uh, with us uh, prokuri shinwas garu also with us Welcome, sir. I request uh, Prokuri Shinwas Garu to uh, introduce our uh, resource persons to the new viewers. Yeah, uh, good morning, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we have here with us uh, Professor S. Jairas Garu, Phonetics and Spoken English Wing of uh, Ipla University, Hyderabad. Uh, now, he had a PhD uh, from Central University of English and Foreign Language, Hyderabad, and had written many articles, uh, among them lexical level orienting in Telugu, uh, a, a philosophical. Uh, a phonological study and had written many books uh, on among them English accent uh, uh, training, mutual uh, intelligibility, uh, and also developing communication skills. A uh, course developed for CITU means that the Central Institute of Tool Design training program, a course in a uh, functional English for uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University. Sir, we are very happy to have you here. Uh, please start your session. Thank you. Sir, unmute, unmute. Please unmute, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, let me share my uh, uh, PPTs. Yeah, here we go. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. And my and I'm audible, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Very much, and uh, uh, I welcome you all once again to this uh, uh, session on phonetics and uh, the second session on phonetics. Uh, uh, first of all, um, I thank all the people behind this program and uh, the administrators, and then. Uh, uh, the technical staff and all the policymakers who uh, uh, who have given me this opportunity to interact with the teaching fraternity of Andhra Pradesh. I also thank you for taking part in the uh, webinar uh, broadcast yesterday and. Uh, I thank you one and all once again. <clears throat> right, uh, when it comes to phonetic, we were talking about the two versions of phonetics. The version is the expert's version of phonetics. The second one, uh, today we are talking Phonetics for better English pronunciation. This is learner's version of phonetics. I also mentioned uh, a fact that is, uh, you know, during the Q and A session, in response to another questions. You know, when we take up grammar, we have an expert's grammar. And, uh, and also the user's grammar. And normally we call it functional grammar. Uh, in a similar fashion, we have expert user's phonetics. Today we are going to reflect user's phonetics. And that's why I have clearly mentioned uh, uh, the main topic, under the main topic, phonetics for better English pronunciation. Right. Uh, <clears throat> the objectives behind the, uh, today's presentation, uh, today's uh, webinar, are uh, to create awareness of English pronunciation practice, to help the participants understand the Telugu English, you know, uh, you go to a linguistic state, you will find a variety of English there. 
that variety is characterized by the mother tongue of the speakers of English there in the state. So when it comes to uh, the Telugu states, the English is spoken by Telugu states is characterized by certain Telugu linguistic features or uh, the phonological features, right? So that's why I have termed it as Telugu English. So the second objective goes this way. Uh, the first one, uh, the objectives are to create awareness of English pronunciation practice, to help the participants understand the Telugu English, and lastly, to offer the participants essentials of English pronunciation. So these are the three objectives behind this presentation today. Uh, uh, let me see, uh, I hope uh, I will achieve all the objectives today. Um, before, you know, uh, taking off, uh, let, me, let me mention one important fact. See, phonetics is a scientific branch of speech study. So, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, some of you are familiar with the idea of phonetics. Some of you perhaps must be, uh, must be accessing in this webinar. So, uh, or uh, first time they must be using, you know, uh, first time they must be listening to the word phonetics as a branch. I think all of you must be familiar with phonics. Phonics is a, a method derived from phonetics and the teaching of a language. And uh, yesterday, uh, you know, since it is the expert's version of phonetics, for some people, uh, it may be very, uh, 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 it, uh, you know, very difficult to understand certain ideas and concepts but I can't help it out, you know, the nature of the topic uh, sounds so. Uh, 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 however, I'll try to, uh, you know, put the ideas very clear and uh, even today. So let me, uh, can you please watch this short video? Uh, she's a foreigner. But uh, uh, let me let me ask you to see how she is speaking. Nina, ha, Randy, you pay Randy? Ah, Manasa. Manasa and pay March Kunara. Actually, I'm at the other pet cat Manasa. Asal pay Randy? Dania. Dania na. Dania. Manasa and pay March Kunak. Tell me, which one start just Sara? Oh, Nandi. Eppan Nanchi? Two thousand. Two thousand Nanchi. Two thousand love marriage ainda. Love marriage. Ah, love marriage. Love marriage. Money. Obviously, antara. Even a Telugu lo matla dandi. Ante. Ipre matla dandi kada Telugu lo. Okay, we intlo me ro ro jo anta chase tara. Chase me kodi kodi chase tara me ro. Me re me na. Aida na nacite e man tar Telugu lo. It's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. difference what we need to understand here is she is a foreigner uh, by name Dania, 
married to a Telugu guy and uh, started picking up Telugu. And you have seen the Telugu she's been speaking. I feel, you know, she's quite comfortable uh, speaking Telugu. And her accent of Telugu, uh, I don't know how you rate it. I personally rate it as excellent. And, uh, you, know, you know, see, uh, how is it possible? How is it possible is a big, you know, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, how is it possible, you know, how is it possible to speak uh, uh, Telugu uh, uh, for a foreigner? And I would like to draw your attention to one of the important things. Uh, uh, there is a case study going on. Uh, some example case uh, uh, speech samples are under research. And uh, what we need to understand here is, you know, 20 Telugu migrant school laborers uh, speak Gujarati exactly as Gujaratis do. As Dania was speaking Telugu, and the Telugu migrant school laborers speak Gujarati. And we have collected speech samples and while they are speaking Gujarati, uh, what are the responses of uh, native Gujarati speakers? And we have collected the speech samples also. Since it is an unpublished research, uh, you know, we are going to publish in a, uh, 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 you know, uh, a couple of months time. So uh, I don't want to show you the speech samples. That's why uh, I'm just uh, presenting in black and white. So 20 Telugu migrant uh, uh, skill laborers speak Gujarati exactly as Gujaratis uh, do speak Gujarati. Their speech samples are under research. That's why we are not uh, uh, playing the speech samples. Now, the question is, how is it possible? When Dan Dania was speaking Telugu with a very excellent uh, uh, accent of Telugu, being a foreigner, how is it possible? When 20 Telugu migrant skill laborers, they are not uh, highly educated, they speak Gujarati exactly as Gujaratis do. How is it possible? So let us let us l listen to this girl. Okay, a British accent first. Huh. So in British accent, it's actually a very simple accent. Most of the people, I mean Indian, follow this accent, but I don't know why I don't like this accent a lot. I have American accent. Ah, chal. Oh, American. American accent is my favorite accent. I don't know why, because we have to twirl our tongue, we have to just drop some of the words, we have to cut out the words, cut out the last position of a word, sometimes we have to drop the word. The word just turn into a different position, so I love this American accent a lot. RP. Let's take a look at the British accent. I'm going to call this RP, which is received pronunciation. This action should be used by the actors in Britain and, of course, but some of the anchors who are working in BBC, so they should have this received pronunciation accent. Polish accent is an accent which is used in Britain as so, well, but we can't call it British, we can't call it our uh, Mercia pronunciation, or we can't call it any of the type like Canadian and all, but it's actually a Polish accent who the Polish people or the royal families like Queen and Kings use this accent mostly there. Because whatever they do with, they just mix the British and American accent and perform it as a Polish accent. You can say this is very easy. I mean, like, we can हर एक चीज को ऐसे difficult लेने लेके चलेंगे कि ये बहुत difficult है बहुत difficult है just believe me you can't do the friends she is uh, uh, a very uh, young girl by name Janavi when she was doing uh, the show she was just thirteen and she could uh, speak English in eight accents. Janavi, who never traveled abroad, can speak English in eight accents. The big question, how is it possible? Dear friends, 
we may uh, uh, you know we may uh, 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 add certain uh, buts and ifs to the performance yeah because she is able to produce it because she is this because she is that janavi was born in a village in north india in a north indian village raised as any other rural child in india but she could speak english in eight different accents how is it possible we simply you know appreciate her with an expression ah she is brilliant ah she is exceptional dear friends what makes her exceptional at all we need to speak just like that or if we want to develop uh, uh such listening and speaking skills what are necessary how is it possible and what are necessary steps we need to take i'll also give my uh, uh experience here when i travel to libya to work in a university i knew no arabic but after reaching there i won't say it sounds greek and latin you know uh, it's it sounded uh, greek and uh, arabic to me but i could say uh, greek and latin but i could say uh, it sounded greek and arabic to me <laughs> but when it comes to uh uh picking up the language i had to struggle a lot and i was asked to attend free arabic classes which i registered first but deregistered soon without attending given a single class and then i started picking up arabic believe me within 2 months time i was speaking arabic as native uh, uh uh libyans who reside in the area called sirth how is it possible it's a big question i'm taking my personal experience janavi's case and dania's case into consideration and trying to draw certain uh 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 you uh, know uh, certain measures we need to uh, take if you if we really want to uh, uh, acquire that kind of accent and pronunciation or spoken varieties of languages so i would like to draw your attention to two important things the first one self motivation which is highly required you well you know uh, why do we need uh, the english that is uh, uh, you know the variety of english that is, that, that, that is spoken somewhere uh, uh, in the foreign countries why do we need it dear friends you know when we uh, speak languages we we should speak languages in their quality and you know in their uh, uh, natural form you know if some uh, uh, a foreigner comes and uses uh, telugu in their own way hello bagnare what i am chestnaru which is not appreciated because you know the accent is not up to the mark and you uh, know certainly you know uh, we appreciate and encourage uh, people like dania or the accent spoken by dania the accent telugu accent spoken by dania we certainly encourage and appreciate it because the language has got its own quality uh, yesterday i was uh, talking about it languageness that is what we could see in dania's telugu and janavi's english with regard to the quality of the english language right for this they are highly motivated 
speaking of arabic i was highly motivated i used to have uh, some of uh, uh, my telugu friends in the same place in the same workplace they stayed for about 2 years they couldn't pick up arabic much in terms of quality because whenever i used to discuss with him uh, with them they used to say why do we need it we don't need it ha chalta hai so they are not very particular they are not keen on picking up uh, the arabic in its original original form uh, or virtual you know uh, features uh and sorry real time features so that is what we need to understand here self motivation is crucial see uh i can never do it i can never do it i can never if we decided that way we can never never do it we never is the first level of uh, 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 your initiation to the languageness of english it is not a neuroscience it's very simple you have the speech apparatus as a speakers has english speakers have got two lips and you do have two lips english uh, 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 speakers uh, have got one one glottis we do have one glottis one oral cavity the english speakers and the telugu speakers have so the same teeth the same structure and anatomy so dear friends the same you know they do have the same guitar that we have with us but if we start playing it we can play it whatever the song it is so dear friends that is what we need to understand here self motivation is is very much required to acquire the quality and the languageness of any language when you try to learn the language or to, when you try to learn it self motivation is very much required as teachers as teachers if we are self motivated and try to pick up expressions or uh, utterances or sentences in their quality and produce them yes dear friends we can certainly take a uh, uh, take a step on the ladder of success right right uh, the second important thing is the imagination uh, sorry the imitation game you know uh, we do learn our mother tongue we have learned our mother tongue through imitation how does a child learn its mother tongue by imitation if there is no imitation there is no learning of a language imitation is very crucial so the first tool is your own self motivation which is in your hands the second one is the imitation game you can only imitate so both the tools are in your hands if you if you don't like if you hate imitation and feel you know guilty of imita- imitation i think uh, learning language in its original quality and the uh, languageness seems to be a dream so the imitation game is very very important and you should be highly motivated or self motivated to imitate the languageness and the quality of the language so it is something like that you know when you try to sing a song you will try to sing a song 
in its original tune and melody. If Balasubramaniam Garu sings a song and which uh, uh, hits in a great manner, and when you try to sing the same song, you will have always the original model, the master model, and you try to imitate it. And you will try to imitate and you will try to imitate in accurate rhythm and melody. This, uh, the one who sings in accurate melody and rhythm is treated as a singer, a very good singer. So imitating songs is nothing but, you know, this is the quality we have acquired uh, right from the childhood. So you have the ability and capabilities of imitating the rhythm and melody, the sound and quality. So both the tools are with you. You are capable of doing it. You can be self-motivated as teachers. You can, you are, you have imitated, you have used the ability, your ability called imitation in maximum uh, 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 form to the maximum capacity. That's how you could speak Telugu very well. Let me tell you, before we are, we were born, all the human languages are for, were foreign languages to us. Once we were born, when we started, you know, getting exposed to the Telugu language, we slowly imitated and acquired, listening, imitating, and, uh, uh, you know, are very, very important speaking skills. Most of the times we, you know, for imitating what we need, what we need, we need the proper, you know, uh, uh, model of rhythm and rhyme. For example, if you uh, want to learn a song, learn to sing a song uh, sung by uh, uh, Balasubramaniam Garu, you always look for the original model. You don't look for the song sung by Balasubramaniam Garu and uh, reproduced by Jai Raju. You don't look for that. So you will always look for the original model. So for the original model, what you need is, you don't need the script, just the script. You need the voice. You need the song in sound, rhyme, rhythm. That is the model we always look for. When you have that model and try imitating it, dear friends, one day we will try to achieve the languageness. If not the languageness, the exact languageness, certainly the near near native languageness. That's why we call it near native accents, which can be globally intelligible. So the imitation game is very, very important. Most of the times when we say imitate and imitate, what to imitate and how to imitate are, again, the big questions. Let us, let us move on and let us try to understand certain Asians, Asian, uh, sorry, essentials of English pronunciation for imitation. What to imitate is a big issue and big question. Dear friends, let us, let us move. We try to learn a language, a new language. We try to focus on sentence. And the sentence grammar. Maybe initially writing, uh, 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 you know, writing and uh, reading the alphabet in that language. The alphabet of that language. So 
these are the uh, 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 very common and popular issues uh, people adopt while they try to learn a new language. But this morning, for a, a, a better understanding of imitation, I would like to draw your attention on a notion called utterance. See, sentence we know, not sentence, but utterances, not sentences. What is the difference between utterance and sentence? Let us try to understand this. Whenever, uh, whenever, we, uh, whenever our people try to uh, uh, join a spoken English course, the teacher begins with grammar. The teacher begins with the sentences. But what we need to, uh, one of my students came to me and said, sir, uh, I wanted to start a spoken English center, what should I do? I, I said, in the class, at least, for the, at least for the first two months, you don't speak much. Let them listen and speak. How is it possible? Let them listen and struggle. You know, even though we don't learn anything in terms of reading and writing and grammar, while listening, we keep learning the human mind, the cognitive abilities keep working. When you start listening, you start, you know, your cognition starts perceiving the quality of the language. You know, when I started speaking, before starting, you know, uh, before I started speaking uh, Arabic, when I was listening, it was a very, very difficult task. But I still, but I still, uh, I was still motivated to listen to Arabic. And uh, what happened after some time? I could get, I know I could perceive my ear can tolerate uh, the Arabic music, uh, the Arabic sound and melody. And uh, without any words, without any meaning, so uh, without, uh, without understanding any utterance, I used to uh, 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 produce uh, you know, mock speech, idiotic uh, speech quality. So then I understood, oh, human mind doesn't keep quiet when it listens to something. It processes the melody. It processes the music. It processes the sound and the sound quality. So that is where we need to be motivated, self-motivated to keep listening and listening and listening. Right? Sometimes I used to listen to people for an hour or so, understand only one word or two words in the initial days of my uh, uh, Arabic learning venture. So dear friends, languageness must be learned and acquired through the ear. If, the, if your ear is very active, you can receive the inputs of the languageness. One day you can produce the sound quality or the speech quality. That is what Dania did. That is what Janavi did. That is what uh, you know, uh, uh, the 20 Telugu migrant skill laborers were uh, uh, doing and, and, uh, uh, and speaking uh, Gujarati exactly like Gujaratis, uh, 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 you know, like Gujaratis. So that is what we need to understand here. So dear friends, we have to understand this important aspect of listening. And while listening, if you want to pick up expressions, what I uh, want to uh, ask you to focus, uh, focus on is not sentence, but utterance. What is the difference between sentence and, and utterance? Sentence is a grammatical unit. It should have subject, verb, object, or it should have tense, whatever it may be. 
and the utterance is a vocal unit you will see the noise the meaningful noise vocal unit sentence is mostly written but utterance is all the time spoken sentence can be an utterance but utterance need not to be a sentence what does it mean sentence can be an utterance but utterance need not to be a sentence see for example uh, if i ask you something uh, ismail garu am i audible yes sir no yes yes sir yes am i audible and uh, ismail garu was saying yes if you look at yes it is an utterance it doesn't have a grammatical structure dear friends what we need to understand is utterance need not to be a sentence but sentence can be an utterance whatever i am speaking most of of my uh, speech includes uh, uh, sentences but here and there there are certain expressions which are not even a sentence okay so and sentence is structure driven it it should have subject verb object it should have tense right and uh, sentence uh, utterance is always context driven utterance is always context driven in the context meaning is more important rather than the grammatical structure and if you can bring out the words that are very very crucial for meaning and ignore a uh, uh, grammatical structure it's okay functionally if you move with that base uh, uh, without uh, with that basic understanding if you move to reading and writing there you can brush up your grammar and uh, develop certain uh, uh, writing skills so uh, the last one is the basic unit in sentence uh, you will have uh, words but in utterance what we do have what we have a uh, what we have in the uh, in an utterance is just this you know a syllable and syllable units what are syllable units are telugu aksharas every akshara every letter of telugu is a syllable ka ka is a syllable ka ka is a syllable if you want to look at english word and english words and try to understand the syllable for example uh, uh you take any english word try to write it with telugu script and uh, each letter you pre uh, present will be a syllable so that is how we can understand the syllable syllables are aksharas like telugu aksharas right let us let us move ahead and uh, for example if you take up uh an arabic expression like uh uh anam sharaf and uh, when you try to listen to this how do we listen to this what i listen to and what i picked up uh, uh is just this you know the number of syllables a na m sha raf and i'm sharaf i don't know a na m sha raf these are the syllables if you try to use telugu script and write this utterance uh, uh you will end up with number of syllables so i should know the syllables very clearly and the syllable sequence is also very important if i change the sequence of syllables you will end up with with a wrong meaning or wrong sentence or nonsense utterance so that's why i need to perceive the syllables the order of the syllables the letters aksharas uh, i should be able to perceive and in their original order so that's how we can look at utterance so utterance is the most 
important one to be focused while picking up any human language, any new language in your life. That is the basic step your ear perceives, or that is the basic unit that your ear perceives while listening to other languages. Uh, let me let me give you some examples or samples of utterances. For example, if you look at this one, good morning, good morning. If you go by the written expression, good morning, the Telugu way of pronouncing the, the expression. Because uh, uh, Indian languages follow the spelling pronunciation. Whatever we write, we should produce. Whatever we produce, we should write. So there is one-to-one -one relation between speech and writing in uh, 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 writing utterances or sentences in Telugu or Indian languages. But here, you know, it is not the case. You will just listen. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The try is dropped. Good morning. This is the expression. Good morning. Good morning. So if you repeat this in this similar fashion, uh, in this fashion, uh, a couple of times, it's not a big rocket science to achieve accuracy. See? with regard to listening and speaking. Uh, the second expression, come to the second utterance, let me begin the lecture. The Telugu way, let me begin the lecture. Because every syllable, every letter must be pronounced according to our understanding. Let us break it. Let us stop it here. Let us break that understanding here. English has a different way of pronouncing the expressions or utterances. Not in the Telugu way. Let us keep the Telugu way aside and come to the English language and try to understand its way of pronouncing or producing the utterances. So let me begin the lecture. So in the English way, let me begin the lecture. Let me begin the lecture. Let me begin the lecture. Let me it is not ta, lep. He has written ta, but he is pronouncing pa. Just listening. Don't worry about the rules behind it. Let me know. Let me. Let me begin the lecture. 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 Let me begin the lesson. See, these expressions are very, very common in a classroom. If you practice uh, uh, these expressions uh, for five minutes, listening to the original ex utterances spoken by uh, native British speakers, you can practice them in four or five minutes time and go to the classroom, use it, one, uh, uh, use it once, and the second time a little bit you know, comfortable, you'll be a little bit comfortable while using these expressions. If you use them four or five times, the expressions will be yours. So you that's how you have to plan from learning. Initially, when you were imitating these utterances, you were learning. When you use them in the classroom in their original form, after four or five times, you will own the expression. So every day, with regard to utterances, target utterances, pick up certain target expressions or utterances, practice for about five to 10 minutes, use them or produce them four or five times. Then you will move from learning to owning the utterances. You have to own the utterances. So dear friends, that is how you can use the expressions or utterances. Right, now let us come to the second, third one. Let Gauri speak now. 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 Ta has become Ga. Let Gauri speak now. Let Gauri speak now. How do we understand this? 
when you listen to the original speaker's speech or native speaker's speech you will perceive your ear is capable of perceiving the sounds in proper units called syllables and repeat them imitate and repeat them so that's it when you look at do you understand do 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 you understand me 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 remember the you know you are a model speaker of english for your students if you practice today let us say four five utterances use them in the classroom utterances can be can turn to be a model for your students and they immediately imitate the teachers right now let us come to uh, uh last but one i ask her i ask her i ask her i will ask her see the melody the rhythm is disturbed so the whole utterance loses its melody and languageness i ask her i ask her i ask him don't worry about it what do you listen to what do you hear you try to listen to it and try to perceive by your ear in terms of syllables because you want to imitate so if you want to imitate the syllable is the basic unit remember this please i la ska i la ska i la ska if you go by words not by syllables what will happen oh i'll there are two words i and will you will separate them and say i will ask her i will ask her we will read but if, you know if you the native speakers utterance i ask her then you will understand your ear give your ear a chance to listen to the original utterance please then your cognition you need not to do anything else your mind processes it and produces it when it is needed so most of the times we don't want to allow our to listen to the native varieties or the uh, native uh, speech samples so our cognition cannot process the native utterances hence our cognition is unable to produce our mind is unable to produce the native speech quality dear friends try to understand this and the last one i'll give you an utterance sample here lend me your pen please lend me your in telugu way lend me your pen please and uh, in the native speakers way let me your pen please let me your pen please lem lem me ya pen 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 it's not pen he says pen please so together lem ya pen please let me your pen please let me your pen please let me your pen please dear friends utterance must be the most uh, 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 important unit for people to focus on while learning the languageness or the original speech quality of a language so while learning the language what happens is you know if you focus utterance you focus the utterance most of the times what happens when we look at this uh, when we listen to a particular sentence what is our focus it is not the voice quality or speech quality it is always oh what is this sentence is it past tense or present tense 
is it active voice or is it act is it an active voice or passive voice is it in direct speech or indirect speech we get into all the grammatical details and we get distracted by the grammatical patterns at this level at the level where you're focusing on listening and speaking so when you take a button so what should we understand we need to understand the context every utterance has got its own context and the purpose when i say good morning there's a context particularly as teachers uh, uh, the context may be your classroom i go to uh, i go to my class every morning i have to greet my students saying good morning good morning that is a context what is the purpose to greet my students so that is very important good morning i need not to worry about uh, uh, whether good is adjective or adverb what are the three forms you know uh, in terms of degrees of comparison good uh, uh, better best so i need not to worry about that at this juncture good morning 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 uh, morning means you know morning so good morning you know good morning is a proper utterance and what you need to do uh, what do you need to understand when you listen to this uh, uh, to this expression from a native speaker yeah the context try to understand uh, uh, the context and what is the purpose try to understand the purpose that is the first aspect you need to focus on utterance uh, the second one is sound strings and syllables syllables and sound strings uh you know as i mentioned to you uh let me open let me open please la me ya pam please pam please let me open please these are the sound strings your ear if you listen to uh, uh the uh, 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 utterance spoken by a native speaker your your ear can certainly perceive the syllables in proper voice and sound and every uh, uh, utterance has got message and melody that is what we need to understand you know for example if you take up a tamil sentence enna pa nalla irukkingla enna pa nalla irukkingla and a banara ah kya viraj sah wala hello how are you so every time the melody differs so every language has got its own melody patterns so message is also there try to understand the message when i say good morning uh, i am very good to my students i am very cordial to my students uh, that's why i am wishing them that is the message oh my teacher wishes me that is the message my teacher always wishes me good morning that is the message i send across this is the utterance grammar grammar related to utterance context and purpose some strings and syllables message and melody if you just pay your mind is capable of doing it processing this but allow your ear and your mind to process each and every utterance that you come across that happens if and only if you are self motivated to learn the language in its accent so now i'll focus at an uh, uh, i'll focus on certain uh, telugu related issues practical issues while picking up uh, in telugu has a very beautiful phenomena you take an english word and add u and it becomes a telugu word pen and add u pennu bus basu cup kappu board boddu book booku when we start picking up proper english proper spoken english with regard to pronunciation this is what you need to do you have to chop you have to cut that last u 
You know Pennu in your language. You have Telugaized it. You have borrowed the English word into Telugu and you are uh, using it as Pennu. And now when you start speaking English, you have to cut this, that U. It should come back. Uh, you should come back and say pen. Basu, bus. Kapu, cup. Bo. Buku, book. So this is one of the problems with the Telugu learners of English. The second one is questioning ah. Bagunnaru, bagunnara. That ah is a questioning suffix in Telugu. Sometimes u. If you look at when are you coming? When are you coming? Are you coming? Uh, are you coming? Ah, uh, uh, that is questioning. When are you going? Uh, uh, these two are the Telugu effects to the English language. So what you have to do is you have to chop these suffixes. Pay attention on this. Closely observe your way of speaking. Are you using these tags? That is the practice to give them up in your speech and uh, speaking. So you are fine, huh? You're fine. You're coming, you're coming. When are you coming? When are you coming? When did you finish your work? I'm just exaggerating a bit, but you know, it will be there all the time in Telugu speak, uh, uh, spe you know, Telugu speakers of English, most of the times. And if you have overcome that, uh, perfectly all right. But I'm generally speaking, the Telugu speakers of English have got these tags. Uh, that's how uh, the English spoken by Telugu sound uh, different. All right, uh, uh, now let us come to uh, the other important thing. So the first one, U ending of uh, English words borrowed into Telugu, you have to pay attention on, to that, uh, on them. You have to chop U. The questioning on questioning U. The third one, tricky R, tricky R sound. Are Mahesh and Meena going? Are. But in English way, are, are Mahesh and Meena going? Ra is, Ra disappeared here. In writing it is there. But in speech, while you are listening and trying to understand the utterance, Ra is not there. Are Mahesh and Meena going? So it is Ra in writing is there, but Ra in utterance is not there. Now let us come to second one. Are, are Indira, are Indira, are Indira and Meena going? Ra here is there. Third one, we are arguing for your growth. See, are. The second word are there, rise there. In uh, again, Ryan argue, arguing, rise not there in the original speech, in the native speaker speech. For, for your, for, Ryan uh, for disappeared. And your growth, again, Ryan your is also uh, uh, absent. In growth, Ra is there. So dear friends, Ra in English appears and disappears on and off. No need of rules here, but listen and practice. If it is there in an utterance, produce it. If it is not there, drop it. You need not to produce it. So you have to, while you're practicing the proper utterance, English utterance, you pay attention, 
you listen to the native speaker's utterance and try to follow, listen, perceive, and imitate exactly. If Ra is there, it should be there in your repetition. If Ra, Ra is absent, make it, you know, absent even in your reproduction or, you know, repetition otherwise, right? So that is what you have, you have, uh, that is what we need to pay attention on. Right. The third important aspect, you know, I want to draw your attention. One of the important aspects I want to draw your attention on is just this. Some English vowels are not seen in Telugu. So, for example, if you look at strong A, A in Telugu, A. And weak uh, in English, you have A, uh, uh, very strong and uh, very, very weak. And you have another one, rounded O. O. Look at the examples. Under. A in the first uh, uh, instance, like U in spelling, is very strong. In the same word, the final ER, that suffix, uh, uh, that those two let letters, E and R, uh, are representing the light uh, un, a, un, de. So that weak and light as must be maintained to produce the original speech utterance. You know, need not to worry, but when, while you're listening to the native speaker's utterance, try to observe whether it is weak or strong. What does he produce? Pay attention on this is strong, this is weak. Fine. For example, if you take up, uh, but in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in Telugu speaker speech, under, 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 ah, uh, and ah, uh, both of them are strong. So that, you know, uh, breaks the balance or rhythm. Locker. Look at this one, locker, law, or rounded. And the final R is weak. A and a. Uh. So you have to, when you, but in the English, uh, sorry, uh, 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 in the Telugu way of speaking or pronouncing this word is lakar, la. We make it strong, but it should be rounded. La, okay. And uh, when it comes to light and uh, uh, strong and weak, the article A is mostly weak, not strong. So most of the times we produce it uh, uh, as a strong and uh, a long one. Yeah, he, doctor, a yeah, doctor. But he's a, he's a, he's a doctor. Uh, near, an engineer, weak. So let me, let us move faster. Uh, I'll just wind up my session in another, uh, Five minutes time, I believe. Six English glides are not seen in, uh, in Telugu. See, in Telugu, we, ha we have glides, two glides. For example, I and ow, A, A, I, O, O, ow. Ow is a glide, long, you know. I and ow, but English has got eight. So different, A, I, a, U, E, I, I, you know, you have so many exercises uh, uh, with regard to these things online. You can browse uh, uh, the internet and uh, you can Google and then find out certain uh, exercises, audio lingual exercises uh, of these vowels. But they are very, very crucial. See, we have two, they have eight. So it means their English is uh, uh, very rich in terms of glides and you need to pay attention on them if you want to produce beautiful utterances in English. Right, practicing these glides will definitely help you in producing, in reducing MTI, mother tongue influence. You know, wherever we see these eight uh, glides, we try to use only two glides or sometimes use long vowels. So that creates a problem. That's why pay attention on. Um, 
one principle listen to a very good set of utterances carefully allow your ear to perceive them properly allow your mind to produce them exactly so this is what we need to understand and uh, you know subject auxiliary contractions are not at all maintained in the english is spoken by telugu speakers i am i am i am is a contraction you see you need not to expand it and say i am in spoken english all these expressions or contractions are always shorter i am i am we are we are you are you are he is his she is it's there i have i we have we've you've he has not necessary you can say his she's it's they've for example if you look at this one kiran's been kiran's been a doctor kiran's been a doctor for 20 years now kiran's been a kiran's been a kiran has been a doctor for 20 years now kiran's been kiran's been a kiran's been a doctor for 20 years now satvik's god sat satvik gods iit admission right so uh, an iit admission so something like this you know you need to uh, uh, focus on and practice uh, your pronunciation similarly auxiliary and not contradictions aren't are not aren't haven't don't observe the contractions in your speech very very clearly when you listen to listen to the contractions how they sound in the native speakers utterances right uh dear friends uh, uh uh you know i want you to listen to this for a while and then we can proceed further hope uh, the uh, video is audible and visible yeah video is visible and audible the greatest treasure the greatest treasure by amit garg amit garg one day peter found a treasure map hooray i'm going to find this treasure and have some adventure he exclaimed peter set off he walked a long way and finally reached a forest there he met lion you are strong and courageous said peter to lion will you come with me on a treasure hunt lion agreed and joined peter the forest was dense and dark peter was afraid but with lion by his side he made it through when the two finally reached the mountain they met eagle you have excellent vision and can alert us to dangers said peter to eagle will you come with us we're looking for a treasure eagle agreed and joined peter and lion the mountains were tall and craggy lion slipped but peter was swift enough to give him a hand and pull him up eagle with his sharp vision watched every step they took soon they reached the valley below where they met sheep will you join us in our search for treasure peter asked the friends i stop it here and uh, you know uh, amit garg is an indian 
but you know uh, picked up uh, the british accent very clearly and uh, you can you can browse for such video clips with regard to stories and storytelling and practice pick up relevant stories for your classroom purposes practice them you have you know uh, we are blessed we are in an age of uh, technology of course we are in an age of corona also but we are really blessed with technology you can keep this on your mobile you can download and keep it on your mobile use headphones keep listening and listening and listening and you will certainly produce the quality amit garg is producing while speaking dear friends it is language you know uh, let me mention this here very clearly language learning is imitation but imitate properly don't compromise on the quality when you want when you want apple phone go for apple phone which is original we are in in an age of internet and it revolution everything is available at a click you want the native speaker speech samples available on the net your friends thank you very much for your and attention on this academic presentation thank you thank you very much yeah over to uh, dr ismail and uh, thank you mr uh, nawasgar thank you very much sir uh, yeah you can stop sharing uh, your screen if but no need of sharing the screen yes sir yes sir we have some questions uh, okay yeah, sir please. if you have any question you can start questioning and i have few yes let me ask first sir uh, yeah karuna sagar uh, is asking that why should we write silent letters in spelling if it is it is very difficult to teach primary students see uh, i don't encourage you to start uh, you know uh, uh, when you say primary students primary level what do you mean let me know the uh 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 understanding of primary students one to fifth students that's one to fifth students right in the initial years first class i don't advise to you know introduce them writing see the natural way of learning languages is slightly different so we listen and listen and listen and try to speak learn to speak and then we start attending the school so when the students come to you for the first year give them a lot of listening and speaking tasks a very less of if you have 100 hours maybe 80 hours of listening and speaking only 20 hours of some alphabet and the pronunciation of alphabet and uh, alphabet into words right so this is the first thing secondly you know that's why english is slightly different in terms of uh, 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 linguistic issues there is no one to one correlation between writing and speaking that's why we have two different systems and approaches uh while learning the english language one is for pronunciation the other one is for writing and spellings so for writing system you have 26 letters for speaking system you have 44 phonemes there are two different systems so why are why should we uh, uh introduce both of them you know see one day uh, the students must be uh good at speaking and writing so you are 
laying foundation or foundations for those uh, two outcomes. Thank you very much. Uh, I said there is another question uh, uh, from Subhash Chandra Ragaru. What he asked, what is the difference between phonics and phonetics? You know, you know, phonetics is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a science in its nature in understanding the speech sounds. How is it produced? And what sounds can go together? What are the phonetic features of a particular sound? What are the places of articulation? What are the manners of articulation? Uh, uh, what happens to the vocal folds while producing, pronouncing or pronouncing this sound? These are the scientific details of the sounds. In phonics, you know, it is not just, uh, it, it's not at all uh, the scientific details of uh, the sounds. It is only the practical details. That is, listen to the sound quality and produce. The children do not reflect upon, you know, these scientific details, but they listen and do it practically. So that is the basic difference. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Another question from Jay Kumar. What he asked, why are these W, J, R sound like walls, uh, but function as consonant? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, today my presentation is basically on the learner's version of phonetics. <laughs> However, this question, is not uh, uh, on the version or related to the version, but uh, related to the yesterday's version. Uh, yet, I'll answer this. It is because of uh, the approximation and structure, how the vowels are produced in terms of oral posture or postures, how, and how these uh, 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 wa yeah and ra, uh, yeah and wa basically. You know how are they produced? You know the uh, what are the oral postures? The oral postures are similar, and the air escapes freely without any obstruction. Wa, yeah, no oral obstruction. So in terms of structure and production. They are exactly like vowels. That's why they are called semi-vowels. But in terms of uh, 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 in terms of articulation, uh, uh, when it when you take up vowels, uh, sorry, uh, yeah and wa, they represent consonant sounds in English. Right. So that's why they are called semi-vowels. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, uh, same you. another question from same uh, person. What does phonemic orthography mean? Mm. You know, see phonemic orthography, there are uh, two important uh, notions, phonetic and phonemic. Uh, phonet, you know, see, uh, I'm not going to give you uh, the philosophical understanding of uh, these two concepts, but basically the practical understands. English people have 44 phonemes in their mind, in their cognition. So they are phonemes, mental representations. But when they pronounce, some sounds uh, 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 sound differently. So, for example, if you take up Pa, ah. pen, 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 pen. Pa is only the phoneme in the cognition of a native speaker, but when he pronounces pa, the strong pa, it's a different sound uh, uh, in the sense uh, uh, of production. So mental representation is pa, but production is pa. So mental representation is phonemic. The phone in the mind is phoneme. The phone produced is, uh, it was published by a corporate uh, company called Mass Intellectual Services Limited. And uh, actually this was produced for children. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, the teachers of children, the teachers who teach English for uh, the teachers who teach English to the children for, for uh, India. So uh, for each sound, we have given a clear description in uh, black and white in words. And also we have given the video and we have invited, you know, they brought uh, one uh, British lady, Marian, uh, Marian, and uh, uh, you know, the m- native speakers, remember, native speakers will also have certain pronunciation problems as our Telugu speakers have some pronunciation problems in Telugu. <laughs> yeah. So they do have, you know, she has got some, you know, problems and I gave her training for about a week and then we went for recording. So wonderful book. And uh, uh, if you want, you know, I think you can uh, browse Amazon. In Amazon, it is there. And uh, English pronunciation uh, segmentals. Segmentals, that is the title. Thank you very much, sir. Segmentals. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Another question from GGS Nageswar Rao, the diet lecturer. How do we help our students shift from the native accent, accent to the required accent? Uh, uh, I have. Uh, you know, I need clarification about these two terms, native accent and required accent. What does it mean? I, I feel both of them, required accent is uh, uh, the native accent. Uh, you mean the local accent or Telugu accent of English and the uh, uh, native accent of English? I'm reading out the same question posted by the, uh, in the comment session by the Nagasura. Yeah. So what we need to understand here is, uh, uh, I see uh, the question this way, Uh, the the Telugu accent of English and and accent of English. So what is the problem there? How to to, uh, move from Telugu accent to native accent? Dear friends, we have seen the problems. In Telugu accent of English, I have mentioned certain features. Oo endings, questioning A and Oo. I have mentioned certain features. Pay attention on that. And always keep the native speaker's uh, uh, speech samples as model while you listen and imitate. That will help the learners to come out, uh, come out of mother tongue influence on the target language. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Uh, do you have any questions to be asked? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, thank you very much for today's uh, excellent presentation. Uh, teachers are very interestingly uh, viewing and listening to your presentation, uh, today's presentation. They are following a lot. Yeah, in this connection, uh, on behalf of the teachers and uh, on behalf of ACRP, we convey our gratitude to you. Thank you very much uh, for a nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And one more thing, you know, I have given uh, uh, the learning materials. Uh, only text uh, is given. Actually, in my book, the text and uh, the CD, both are available. But unfortunately, I can't, you know, copy and because I have publishers permission. Uh, uh, it is a copyrighted uh, stuff. But the text, you know, uh, the preliminary text, I could uh, uh, send it to you. But, you know, uh, you can go through and if you have any doubts, you can get back to me. Thank you very much. Thanks Good, to Andhra thank Pradesh. You. And uh, I personally uh, thank uh, Ismail Garu and uh, Srinivas Garu for uh, taking me on Zoom and uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with uh, uh, thousands of teachers. It's my pleasure to be associated with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We are also convey our gratitude to the Commissioner of School Education, uh, Sri Chenavi Ravadudu Garu and uh, Ms. Vetri Selvi Garu, IAS Officer of Special Officer. Uh, uh, Special Officer. 
and that would be Pratap Reddy Garu of the CAIP director. Uh, thank you one and all and uh, for tomorrow uh, on day 6, uh, uh, Dr. R. Purnima Ravi Garu from Chennai, she will uh, deliver her talk. She is from Chennai uh, and the topic is pronunciation, accent, stress and intonation. This may be the topic for tomorrow. Uh, viewers, please stick to, uh, please, uh, stick to the, our uh, channel and uh, share our channel, like our channel and subscribe our channel. You, you may get a notification. Thank you very much. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.